Tonight is a night for wishing. If you could have one wish, what would it be? This is my wish for you. Much more than this, I wish you love. And in July, a lemonade to cool you in some leafy glade. I wish you health, much more than wealth. Breaking heart and I agree that you and I could never be. And so with my best, my very best, I set you free. I wish you shelter from the storm. One cozy fire to keep you warm, but most of all, when snowflakes fall, I wish you love. My breaking heart and I agree that you and I. My best, my very best, I'll set you free. I wish you shelter from the storm, one cozy fire to keep you warm, but most of all, when snowflakes fall. I wish you love. Do you think it is very important that Americans be on the moon before the Russians, and why? Really depends on who's up there. <laughs> what can you say? <laughs> After you've already said it. <laughs> Our five lovely girls have answered their questions, and now our judges are very busy in the judges' box, trying to come up with your new Miss California. Now a comment from the lovely Miss Modesto. They told me in Modesto that I would be the best, so they said it where the crown is just a matter of time. Came Saturday at night. But she's so sweet, we really didn't mind Cause everybody can be a winner A winner, I guess When you're there, everybody can be a winner That's the secret of happiness Remember Dick Nixon, that kid was a fiction For a comeback trail in California I heard the atheist and tell him The grandma's just spell him He bumped himself off and What did he say?
And speaking for the telephone hour, here is Marilyn Vanderberg. Good evening. Do you hear the bell? They ring in hope of a bright new year, and they ring in celebration. Tonight, we celebrate 21 years of the telephone hour. At the beginning on radio, and now on television. There have been 21 years of music in these halls and hundreds of artists. Grace Moore sang for us, and Mary Martin, Itzio Pinza, Bing Crosby. We heard Rubenstein, Hoffman, and Van Tyler. Fritz Chrysler played humorous. Benny Goodman played jazz. Marian Anderson was here, and she sang Ave Maria. Gracio Marx enacted Coco in the Mikado. Carl Sandberg recited a Lincoln portrait. It was just two years ago that the telephone hour made its television debut. On that program, Renata Tribaldi sang Madame Butterfly. Tonight, she is with us again to recreate that performance. Through the years of the telephone hour, concert artists have come from the world over to be with us. Among others, Joshua Heiden, Gregor Piatagorsky, Andre Segovia. And through the years, these concert artists have performed with our symphony orchestra under the baton of Donald Voorhees. Tonight, we've always saluted the musical theater, great ladies and gentlemen of Broadway. In the past year, such ladies as Ethel Merman, Nanette Fabre. Such gentlemen as Alfred Drake, Robert Preston. This evening we see the excitement of Broadway, the excitement of an opening night, as Shirley Jones and Keith Andes salute the musical of the current season. day-to-day -day convenience of the telephone. I especially like the idea of being able to make and take calls quickly and easily in any part of the house. But the only way to get complete convenience with one telephone would be like this. You see? Or take this situation. Well, since no telephone follows you around, extension phones are the answer to complete telephone convenience. To save you time and steps in the kitchen, for privacy and security in your bedroom, or for a room where your family spends a lot of time. Extension telephones come in a variety of attractive styles and colors. Order yours by simply calling your Bell Telephone business office. As easily as that. I'm Marilyn Vanderbilt in beautiful Nassau. There's so much to see and do here, so much to enjoy. One of the first things to do is to explore underwater. He thought I was ruining my watch, but it was all right. Because naturally, I was wearing my Timex waterproof watch, and water doesn't hurt it a bit. 
This is Fort Charlotte. Isn't the view marvelous? And here's the historic Queen Staircase. It was a busy afternoon, and I kept on schedule with my Timex Florentine watch. It's pretty as can be, and just right for an afternoon dress. This was our fabulous party on the beach. And for the occasion, I wore my evening watch. It's the Timex diamond watch. Real diamonds, set in sterling silver mountings. Yes, in Nassau and everywhere, more smart women wear Timex than any other watch in the world. No two Miss Americas are ever alike. Perhaps one is more beautiful, or one is more talented, or perhaps she's just a little bit luckier. You know what competition goes into becoming a Miss America. Let me let you in on my little secret and tell you how I really won the title of Miss America for 1958, because it happened in a most unusual way. I had competed on Wednesday and Thursday nights in talent and in swimsuit but I hadn't won any of the preliminary judgings. So I naturally thought that Friday night was my last chance to do a good job. And I was to be judged in formal evening gown. Well, I had been scrubbed from head to toe. Mother had pressed my formal at least five times, and I had on brand new long white kid gloves, the very first pair I had ever owned. And I was so proud and careful not to muss my beautiful gown in any way. Well, I was standing in front of the elevator, getting ready to go downstairs, when a door opened across the hallway, and a little old lady walked out. She had beautiful white hair and a twinkle in her eye, and she said, Miss Colorado, I've been looking for you all week. I want you to meet Mr. John. And I said, well, I'd love to meet Mr. John. So she disappeared into her room, and in a minute she came back, and on a leash, she was leading the ugliest bulldog I ever saw in my entire life. He had a, a typical mashed-in face. I could tell from the way he walked, he'd had arthritis for several years. And with no disrespect to Mr. John, a little soap and water wouldn't have hurt him at all. Well, this sweet little lady looked up at me and she said, Miss Colorado, I want you to pet Mr. John. Well, I looked at Mr. John and I looked at my pretty white gloves, and I really wasn't sure exactly what to say until she said, you know, the last two girls who have petted Mr. John have won the title of Miss American before she had even completed the sentence I was on my hands and knees petting Mr. John. <laughs> so I feel that it, I'll never forget when I went down to North Carolina. I was emceeing the Miss North Carolina state pageants. There were 80 girls in the state pageant Four different nights, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the finals on Saturday night. It was such an elegant pageant. Well, just before the curtain went up on Saturday night, I went over to one of the contestants and I said, you're not nervous, are you? And she said, well, I'm not nervous, but we live 70 miles from here, and my father was so nervous that he forgot his shoes. He's sitting out there in the audience tonight in his best suit and his bedroom slippers. <laughs> How many times in your life have you challenged yourself? How many times have you really worked for something? Concentrated, practiced, created, dreamed? How many times have you taken a chance and dared to try something when you really weren't too sure of the outcome? How simple it is to walk the straight and narrow path and never stray into the unknown. We're living in a society today where People stay in the world that's comfortable for them. Have you ever wondered why there's only one public speaking or creative writing course and perhaps five or six history courses? How much easier it is to write down names and dates and then repeat them on an exam than it is to write a theme on your philosophy of life or give a speech on the responsibilities of citizenship. You are somewhat like the mountain climber who works out and prepares himself as best he can. And then he goes out into the unknown. He faces fear. He knows exhaustion, excitement, danger. 
But when he gets to the top, he knows an exhilaration and a feeling of personal accomplishment that few people ever know in a lifetime. That's why the pageant is and will continue to be exciting. Because each of you here tonight took yourselves out of the comfortable world. You've prepared yourselves and developed yourselves to the best of your ability. And you've done things that I'm sure you wouldn't have felt yourself capable of doing even three or four months ago.